Hello and welcome to today's content which is the Holy Flan Raid since it finally has been released and we have the information and it's the correct information now at least according to uh, World of Visions Calculus website especially because we have a modified version of it which I was very not happy about but yeah. Outside of that I will say for all the future raid setups because we're going to be expecting raids to have a high amount of defense and spirit in general after this video all future raid videos will have a very different layout and showing how to prepare for the raid and at least in general so this will be like the last kind of like standard raid video i'll be doing until i change over to a new setup that i already have planned out but yeah without further ado let's begin since the raid already has started and we got the information just now pretty much so yeah here we go and here we are for the raid. So for the Holy Flan, the stats for it specifically, it's going to look a little different from the Japanese side of things because we have a modified version of it. Um, for Pierce Attack, it's going to be negative 15%. For Missile and Strike, 10%. Magic is going to be 20%. Slash at 25%. And then for Elements specifically, Wind is going to be negative 20%. That means you should bring a Wind unit in general. It's going to be doing like massive damage compared to the other Elements. The Elements are going to be at 0%, so it's not... I mean, you can bring other elements if you want, as long as they can hit hard enough, or if they have pierce. So yeah, that is good to see. Specifically for defense and spirit, um, as we know from level 100, defense should be 30 and spirit should be 40. Um, according to the website, that's what it should be. Faith is also going to be at 50, so as you can see, 40 spirit, 50 faith, you should not be bringing magic damage units in general, unless you're going to be struggling a bit more compared to like physical damage. So what you want to bring is going to be pierce damage in general, uh, wind pierce damage, and then wind damage in general. So like just those, it's kind of like the most obvious things, those are going to be very very nice to bring. You want to bring defense and spirit debuffs and imperils, as well as aquatic killer, because the holy flan is aquatic race. You do want to bring Aquatic Killer if you want the extra damage. It is immune to agility debuff, so you're going to have to bring either like Steel Time or something else if you want to kind of like outpace the boss for chains. Damage you will take is going to be Physical Attack, mostly from, um, uh, what is it? No, n not Attributed, I guess. No, it's, it's Typeless Earth Attack. There we go. Typeless Earth Attack, and it will use Silence. So yeah, if you really want to bring a Magic user, try to bring some Silence Resistance. And Espers with Aquatic slash Earth Killer for the UR side of things is going to be specifically Typhoon, um, Tetra, and then Ramu that have like Earth or they have Aquatic Killer. So yeah, those are going to be the more UR popular choices for Espers. And here we are for setting up for the raid. So highly recommended units with the elemental advantage is obviously going to be Winter Luartha. She was made for this raid. She will completely dumpster this raid. Like literally. She's not only the right typing. She also has the pierce damage. She also hits like a freaking truck. One of the hardest hitters in the game. Uh, like especially after her javelin toss. I mean javelin fall. It's going to be so like she's going to be just dumpstering the boss pretty much. End the raid. She will be very very strong here. Additionally, very strong runner-ups in general is definitely going to be um, Tifa and Tubi. Tubi is going to have an edge over Tifa, unfortunately, in terms of raw damage. However, Tifa, because it's only 10% strike, she can chain quite easily to either help her teammates or even herself out. And lastly, we have Corwell. I thought about other wind units, honestly, and I was highly considering Halloween Leela. However, she has to work so uphill with 40, 40 spirit as well as what is it 20 percent magic attack resistance she has a very uphill battle and it's only 50 faith so yeah overall i think actually coral would have been better with her his missile attacks or even chain with drain rush from his nightblade sub jump even with the slash resistance at least he can help chain and set up the other units now highly recommend the units that i would say for strong attack types and or resistance rna can lower the pierce resistance very very fast and she also has single target resistance um in peril as well she can do a lot of damage to this boss and set up her own teammates very easily with this as well noctis is no like no difference as well with his limit break he can also lower the resistances of three different attack types and he has like good moves for it too and he has a defense down like you already know noctis he has the utility Obron. He also has the same utility in a way that he can lower the pierce resistance as well as the elemental resistance. So he is not going to be a slouch either. He is missing the, the defense down, like just like Aranea specifically, which I mean, if the unit does have def uh, like defense penetration, they won't have to worry too much about it. And lastly, I did put Winter Mashiri. She does have at least a drain dive for the defense down. Without it though, she is definitely going to be falling off compared to the other units, just in general. So equipment to consider. Um, Solve the Masa if you're going to bring a mage. If you really want to bring a mage, 
bring soul of Tamasa so you don't get silenced. From here, we do have the pod. I mean, pod is always going to be good because it has the single target resistance from getting hit, as well as just giving yourself agility if you need it. From here, Odo's apron, the TMR is very good if you need uh, defense penetration because your unit does not have it. And if they're capable of using this TMR for defense penetration, you should use it. Uh, we also have the Shinra Bangle, which does have the 10 uh, defense penetration. 10 is better than nothing. You should bring it if you uh, like kind of need to boost your team's damage or yourself's damage. We have the Silver Rimmed uh, Spectacles, which is going to be good mostly for only magic users. Keep in mind, you have to choose between this and Soul of the Masa if you want to use like a weapon. So you have to decide, do they have silence resistance or not? That is something to consider. And kind of like the Shinra Bangle, um, but it does not have defense penetration but has the critical damage from Shinra Bangle. We do have Titus's Necklace if you still have that from the Final Fantasy X collab collaboration event. And we do have the Spine Blade that I believe is out even still now or it just went away. I think it, we still have it out right now though. But that has 20% defense penetration. If you do slap it on a sword user, they will definitely be benefiting off that pretty well. So some vision cards to consider. These are not necessarily bonus. Some of them are, but I mean, it, it's really just gonna be up to you what you wanna use. However, the new Luartha vision card is gonna be very good. Not only does this help her chain herself because it has a three hit, it also lowers the critical uh, like evasion. You know what that means? You're gonna be critting a lot more, which means more damage. So it's pretty nice. Uh, we also have the x vision card, which is gonna help mostly wind units for the mono ability. However, the slash penetration also will help like significantly because it's 35% slash penetration if you do have this for your slash users if even if they're wind. So that means like 2B and Corwell can actually deal a lot more damage with the slash penetration. We also have the Clairvoyant Vision card which is going to lower defense for the spear users. Specifically speaking, Aranea and Oberon as well as even um, if Mashari wanted to, she can all they can all use this vision card to lower defense for the boss. So this is also like capable of being used by other spear users just to have really good utility. We also have dashing through the like snowy hills, which is mostly going to be pierce attack up if you have it. And then we do have the New Year's uh, vision card, the MR one, which is specifically for aquatic killer, which is a little bit more unique because it's a little bit harder to find specific race killer um, vision cards. This does help the team if they do have it. So yeah, this is going to be specifically set up for the Holy Flan raid. Here we are for the rare raid, and the rare raid boss is going to be elemental dark, so you should bring light units. So let's talk about the attack types first. So pierce and slash is going to be negative 10%. This does mean the units previously shown in the other slide for holy flan can be used here, so I will not be putting them in the same list again, just so, I mean, it doesn't like show up again, you know, it's like, it's just repeating what I've already said, and it's kind of more obvious because you've already seen it now. So from from that, uh, since we have negative 10% for pierce and slash, let's go down to magic attack types is 0%, which is pretty good. 10% to strike and then 15% to missile. Overall, you don't really want to bring missile units in general to the boss, but I mean the other ones are pretty okay because they're not too high on the resistances. For elements, light specifically is going to be a negative 10%, meaning you should bring light units. And most importantly at the very top, as you can see, dark is 20%. They really don't want you to cheese this boss, like they really don't want people to just cheese rare raids and raids in general with just dark units over and over and over, which is kind of funny, but yeah, this is how it's going to be set up. From here, the other elements are going to be 10% elemental resistances, meaning if they are not going to hit hard enough, I think just bringing a light unit in general is just going to be better in terms of like, if you're not going to be using a very like strong other element unit. So like if you're going to bring like, no offense, but Victora compared to like Aranea, I think it's better just to bring like a different light unit instead because Victora does, is not going to have the necessary defense penetration. She does not, I mean, she does have the defense down with the uh, Shattering Dive uh, break. However, she does not have the more like chaining capabilities or like she can reduce even more of the defenses of the boss. So, I mean, Aranea can lower the pierce resistance by a negative 38% and then do a single target resistance and hits very hard with that. It is going to be more capable than Victor who can only do the defense down and then doesn't have the strong chaining capabilities from like to carry beyond that in peril. If you know what I mean, it's like if there are other units you can use, you don't necessarily have to use the other units, but you get the point. It's like there are units that are going to be stronger. Now for defense and spirit, defense is gonna be at 40. Spirit is gonna be uh, spirit is also gonna be at 40 because it is a cactar. They usually have very high resistances or defenses, and here we go, it's 40 40. Faith is also gonna be at 50. So as you can see, you really, I mean, even with the magic attack resistance and the other resistances, magic damage is not gonna be doing too much damage, not too much, unless you're like the correct element and attack type, etc. I mean, that will be a little bit better, but yeah, you get the point. 
So, what to bring? Pierce units in general, good. Slash units in general, good. Pierce light damage, very good. Pier uh, I mean, slash light damage, very good. And then light units in general will just be very good against the, uh, the boss, specifically. Just make sure you bring defense and spirit debuffs and, and, and or imperils. I got cut up on my words. And lastly, bring plant killer because the golden cactar is a plant it does count for um uh, as a plant race so bringing plant killer will be effective against the boss damage you will take is specifically going to be dark pierce non-attributed non uh non it's going to be typeless non-attributed non-elemental damage which is his thousand needles and then ten thousand needles just be careful of the ten thousand needles like almost everyone's going to die in one shot and he does use paralysis so be careful of that Espers was specifically Dark and Plant Killer. I had to add in the MR Espers even though I usually don't like to add them, only because like, I mean, I, I should. I, I'll probably do it in future raid videos from now on, but yeah, you get the point. Um, Espers with Dark and Plant Killer and or Plant Killer. So the Dark Killer specifically is going to be on Carbuncle and Two-Headed Dragon, as well as the Silver or, yeah, Silver or White Dragon. And from here, the plant killer is going to be specifically on Ochu, which is a little bit weird, but yeah, he is going to be a plant killer. So yeah, this is going to be basically the rare raid stats. And here we are for setting up for the rare raid. So I highly recommend the units with elemental advantage. I will say Summer Kilfe will destroy this boss. I'm not joking, she will destroy it. Not only does she have very high defense penetration, even with Black Panther punished so she can get to 80%, she also has a light imperil onto the boss. And she hits very hard already as it is, so yeah, perfect match for her, isn't it? So yeah, she is going to be very capable of very, like taking down the boss very efficiently. From here, Elena. I know I said don't bring magic damage in general, however, Elena is not only a light element, she has high chaining capabilities, and she also has like agility debuff so you can chain even more on the boss, and she has slash damage. So she really fits the bill for a lot of things, specifically for this boss, so she can still be capable even with the deficit of faith and um, spirit penetration. I will say though, you should try to bring the silver rim spectacles on her if you want a little bit more damage just for the 60% uh, spirit penetration overall. From here, I put Rob here. I know people are going to be like, wait, doesn't he not have defense penetration? However, if you do give him defense penetration or if you have a defense down for him, he is capable of doing very, very high damage because his attack stat is very, very high. And lastly, for the light elements that I could recommend, I know a lot of people, who, especially new players, are going to be using Lucio, which is fine. However, Lucio right now does not have his defense down as well as he does not have his better capable abilities right now because he's in his like nerfed state he does not have his ex state right now i mean obviously you can bring him because he's a bonus unit and he's like i mean if you need it your new player you should bring something right like a light unit which is good however don't expect him to carry remember this is, these these units specifically are being kind of for like setting up for carries or have very high damage capabilities and then lastly is going to be camillo because he is light pierce and he does have good defense penetration he will be a fine add-on to any team now, highly recommend the units with strong attack type or resistance. I know I said I wasn't going to put another repeat character here, but Noctis, I mean, he can fit the bill. It doesn't have to be Pierce. He can be Slash as well. He also has defense down. He also has the imperils for Slash and Pierce and Strike. Like, y you can't blame me for putting him here. Like, he literally is just so flexible in that, especially for raids. But yeah, here we have Cloud specifically. He has one of the highest defense penetrations in the game for a base amount, as well as he does have Braver to lower the Slash resistance even more. And with Triple Slash, he can chain very, very well for Slashes. He is very capable. Zazan, he will always be a good staple, especially if you bring his, um, what is it, Solitary Lion Vision card for the Slash Resistance Penetration. He also has very good chaining capabilities because of Triple Split. He will always be very, very solid in what he can do for raids in general. And Titus, don't forget him. He is still very good. He still has Jet Shot to lower the defense. He also has good chaining capabilities. He also raises the, uh, his agility like uh, with Quick Shot. He is still going to be very good for raiding as well. So like, don't worry. Some units are still gonna be very good, especially for PVE, and he Titus is still gonna be. I mean, Titus is still gonna be very good for that. And Noctis, I don't want. I don't have to explain. It. I already did. Like he, you know, he's gonna be good for there. He's he's just solid enough for it, pretty much. So equipment to consider. If you don't want to get paralyzed, please bring a paralyzed jeweled ring or the white marshmallow miniature. From here, um, we also have the pod specifically for if you're gonna take thousand needles damage and you want to kind of reduce it, even though it's not gonna like reduce it too much. Pod is still good. From here, the 
Remember, a uh, silver rim spectacle specifically is going to be for magic users. And then we do have um, the Shinra Bangle again, specifically for defense penetration, which is going to be important on this boss because it does have 40 defense and 40 spirit. So yeah, you really want to bring penetration or imperils or debuffs in general. Although his apron, once again, is going to be very good for defense penetration. And then we do have the Spine Blade. If they're capable of using a sword, Spine Blade is going to be very useful. Now, vision cards to consider, as I said before, these are not necessarily what I would say bonus cards, but they are, some of them are. So yeah, it, just, it depends what you have and just bring what you got pretty much. So obviously the Flash of Insight is going to be very good for uh, light units overall for physical damage because that 50% attack percentage is going to be very nice, as well as does have Slash Penetration, which is not going to be used here specifically because it already has negative Slash Resistance. You just want to bring Imperils instead, not Penetration for Slash. Um, specifically saying for the Clairvoyant uh, Astrologer Vision card, very good if you have anyone that kind of can use it or the lower defense. Specifically stating, Camillo, he has defense penetration so he doesn't really need it personally. However, he can set up his team if he does have the Clairvoyant Astrologer. Like he can set up Rob, he can set up other units that do not have defense penetration. He can set up Lucio even. So yeah, that's a very good vision card to bring here. Similarly, with the uh, Winter new vision card as well with for Luartha, this one also has a triple hit for uh, Spear users, so this can help Chain as well. So if you have a strong Pierce team, you can bring that just to help Chain more often. And we have here the House of Beerloos, uh the Science vision card. Uh, very, very good. Not only is it going to increase the agility of your team, but also light slash damage so yeah this is gonna be a very solid card if you do have this from a very long time ago hey you gotta bring it out once again it's gonna be very good and then we have Scions of Shadow as well, which is going to raise the light uh, light attack up for your team as well as Dark Resistance. So that means you won't take as much damage from the uh, Rare Raid boss unless it's using the Thousand Needles or Ten Thousand Needles. So just be wary of that. And lastly, we have Echoing Screams, mostly for slash damage overall for any uh, element. It does not It's not element locked. So if you do have this, it's going to be very good for more rainbow comps or just slash damage in general. And yeah, this is basically the end of the video. This is setting up for the Rare Raid. I apologize for letting the video like take a while to get out but i mean i did not want to release wrong or incorrect information like we had changes for the global side and i did not want to like just put a video out just for the sake of putting a video out. and yeah this will also be the last video for um this raid format of a video i will be changing to a new format so i can release it more confidently as well as kind of we'll have a little bit more general generalization however but yeah overall i'm hoping that it will be more effective and yeah since this is the end of the video have a good one. Uh, good luck rating. Please, I hope everyone could get at least one center uh, like robe like recipe at least 63. Keep that in mind. If people can get that, that'd be great because I mean it's just such a good item. And yeah, please have a like, comment, and or subscribe. And yeah, until the next video, which will be the Ibarra video that I will be making. Yeah, until then, peace out.